right into the way the film was made. You had a... I'm going to read you a story now. Good, I like story time. Right. Are you sitting comfortably? Yes. Then, uh, you are sitting comfortably? Yes. Then I'll begin. Right. Here is a very, very important little book. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a story all about Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl, one of my favourites. He's one of my favourites, yes. yes. Have a look at this. Once upon a time, in a large white house deep in the country, there lived an old man who wrote stories. He wrote about everything from giants to witches. You might think he'd be the kind of man who was cross and grumpy and lived alone, but no, he had a wife, children, and two dogs, and he was always very friendly. Oh, hello. I've been expecting you. Come with me and I'll show you round. This is my little work hut here. It's up at the top of the garden, and uh, I've been here about 40 years, I think, and I think I've written just about all my children's books in here. It's lovely and quiet, and, uh, well, you couldn't possibly work in the house with all the vacuum cleaners and things. So this is where I go, every morning and every evening. expect it to be tidy in here. It's never swept out or dusted because no one's allowed to come up here to do that. I'm the only person who ever comes in to my little work hut and every morning I sit down and I get myself really comfortable like this. That is the right slope for my writing board which I put there light on. I sharpen my pencils first. It's a funny little thing that I've had for years. It always works. I put them in there. Pour myself a bit of coffee. Well, there's all sorts of funny things have gathered on this table beside me here over the years. Uh, for example, this, believe it or not, was one of my own hip bones, which was sawed off my hip because of osteo, there's osteoarthritis. And when they saw that off, they then put that in its place. It's called a prosthesis. What else have we got here? This, well, that, that, that's another operation. That's a spine, the result of a spine operation, one of the six I've had. These are the chippings of a, of a prolapsed disc in your spine. And uh, the surgeon put them in there and gave them to me. And they've been there for years, just for fun. Well, the first thing I do when I come in is I, I always sweep my writing board clean because it's full of little bits of rubber and stuff from the time before. I make these boards myself so that I can get them exactly the right size. I put billiard cloth on the top. And on this board, of course I wrote the last book that I finished, which incidentally is called Matilda. This brilliant, lovely little girl has a couple of absolutely disgusting parents. They watch television all the time they're at home. They eat their meals in front of television. And Matilda has to join them. She's forced to. She's only five years old. Whereas, actually, she is a reader of books, and a lover of books. There aren't any books in the house. She has to get them from the library. The parents loathe books. They tear them up when they see them. Another character in, in the story is the headmistress of the primary school she goes to. And she is a fierce, dreadful woman who picks little boys up by their ears and holds them up in the air when they can't decline their two times table or by their hair. And she throws children over the fence in the playground and that sort of thing. She's a very fierce woman, indeed, the Trunchbull. 
For about 20 years, I've had a tiny little note in my notebook saying, do a story about a child who can make things move with her eyes alone. And I've kept looking at this over the years. And finally, uh, a little over a year ago, I, I decided I'd have a go at it. And uh, so I began to work out the plot of this child who did this. Uh, the brains are literally bursting out of her head to such an extent that she can, or f discovers that she can, actually make things move. Like, for example, toppling a glass over at a distance. Now, the first time Matilda discovers this power of hers, um, she gets angry with uh, the headmistress, and the headmistress has a glass of water in front of her. And she stares at the glass of water and suddenly has a wish to tip it over into the headmistress's lap. And, and, and she feels the power suddenly surging behind her eyes. Her eyeballs actually grow hot and hotter and hotter. And the power surges up and, and she can actually feel as though thousands of tiny little invisible arms with hands on the ends of them are reaching out towards the glass to push it over. And then she begins very seriously to concentrate on pushing the glass over. And she sees it just wobble a little bit and start to tip. And she pushes harder with her eyes and harder. And suddenly, over it goes. Wee, that's writer Roald Dahl talking all about his new book, which is Matilda. And the illustrations are by Quentin Blake. This is the book here. Would you like to win a signed copy? Yes, I know you would, Gordon. Right, there is, in fact, a signature inside this one. So there we are. Have a look at that. Now, here is the question. Matilda is Roald Dahl's latest heroine. OK, because you just saw that. He's only written two other books, children's stories, which centre on girls. One of those girls, only one of those girls is named, okay? Which is she, and what is the title of the book? Quite a complicated one, that. I'll read it, I'll slow, read it slowly for you once again. It's Matilda is Roald Dahl's latest heroine. He's only written two other children's stories that centre on girls. Only one of those girls is named. Who is she and what is the title of the book? Okay, the address is going live. BBC Television, London W12, 8QT. Once more going live. BBC